Hi everyone, this is Kathy Grosskirk with Bookkeeping Clean and Simple and I am here starting a brand new video series on mastering QuickBooks Online and how to manage your bank feeds. And this video is understanding the bank feed screen where I'm just going to do a high level overview of the bank feed screen and other videos that I will be doing in this series will build on this particular video. So hopefully it won't be too terribly long. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and start by going into the banking center from here and note that I am using the accountant tools and I'm signing as an accountant user. If you're not an accountant user, you'll be able to do some of these same things that I'm doing in here. But this is basically working from the accountant point of view, just so you're aware of that. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and click on the banking tab. And that's going to take me straight away over to the bank feeds area. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out so we can have more of the screen here. So I'm going to start from the top and I'm not going to touch on every single thing in here, but just highlight the important areas that, that you're going to need to know. If you want to link your bank or credit card accounts, then this is where you would start. You click on this drop down to either upload from file or you can actually make the connections from here. You can also manually update your feeds once you get those connected by clicking on this at any time. Though when you do get these connected, you're going to find that they're going to update on their own pretty much on a regular basis, usually daily. So anyway, we're going to go down here and look at this area right over here. I have four accounts connected. And so you can either look at those visually by looking at each of these individual cards. And I am in accountant view, which allows me to be able to see these and what I think is the best way to view these. As you click on these, it'll access the different accounts here. We also can view them from a drop down. And we can also close up this area if we did not want to see those visually that way. For me, it helps for me to see them visually. Once you click on this, you can actually reorder the accounts to put them in the order that makes sense for you. I'll talk more about that next time, probably. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and open that area back up. Click on the LGE checking, which is the main account that I use a lot. So anyway, once we get down to the next area, we have three tabs. We have the for review, the categorized, and the excluded. So the for review tab is everything that is coming through the banking center or the credit card center that we need to do something with. The categorized is the transactions that have been categorized from the for review area of the banking center. The excluded tab is where everything that you do not need or if you had to enter something in another way where you cannot match readily gets put in there. And so we'll talk about what all that means. As we go through the next few videos, I'm going to go ahead and click on for review again. So that way you can see that we're in the LG checking. We have 154 transactions in here that we have to do something with. And you can see that number right here is 1 through 50 out of 154. There's this gear icon that we're going to talk about next time where you can customize your columns. You can also sort by all dates or you can put a date range in there. And this is going to be helpful as we do cleanups a little bit later. We're we'll talking about cleanups a little bit later. You can also filter out by these different categories here as well. You can also search for different transactions by description, check number or amount. And then you can actually go down through here and see all these different transactions. And they usually bring up the most recent one first. So if you click on the date column here, that'll take you back to the very earliest transaction that is in here that we haven't done anything with yet. So that's helpful if you're trying to gauge how many transactions or how far back they go. That's one of the first things that you can do. So I'm going to go ahead and click back on that to get it back up to current date. We have bank detail here, which basically I did the configuration from the small gear to turn those on. We'll talk about that next time, but you can click on that column you're heading as well to kind of group those like items together. And if you're doing a massive cleanup, you're probably going to want to either filter out by date or group by date to help with that. You can also do the same thing with pay column to see which ones need pays assigned, which is a real important thing. And then the category and match, we're not going to worry about that right now because most of these are going to be incorrect when you're starting out. You can also click on these columns as well, the spent or received column to organize by highest to lower amount or vice versa. But anyway, that's about all I have today. 
As we come back next time, we'll do a little bit more deeper dive and talk a little bit more about the process and the best way to do the workflows through that. And we'll just kind of go from there. So anyway, I hope this helps you. Y'all have a wonderful day, everyone. Take care, and we will see you soon. Thank you for watching. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and share it with others. My goal is to publish at least one new video per week on QuickBooks desktop or online topics, the occasional motivational video, and a few surprises thrown in here and there. I would love to talk to you about how to help you optimize your knowledge and usage of QuickBooks desktop or online. My Calendly link is in the slide. Please use that to reach out to me to schedule a free 45-minute initial consult. I would love to talk to you about your QuickBooks desktop or online training needs. Again, have a wonderful day, and until next time, we'll see you soon. Take care.